Jesus. Hey, I'm here for our daily dose of public speaking wisdom with my friend, my mentor, my speaking hero, Mr. Darren LaCroix. Now, what you don't know about Darren, possibly, he's a world champion of public speaking. I've mentioned him many times. He's also the only person on planet Earth. I don't know about the other planets. He's the only person to be a world champion of public speaking, an accredited speaker, which is a designation through Toastmasters for professionals, and a certified speaking professional through the National Speakers Association, and it's all earned. Here's my question for you, my friend. Okay. As a young man, you were extremely shy. (laughs) Yes. You were told you were not funny belligerently by my brother <laughs> by yes. your brother he did not hold back so that did not stop you from going into comedy yeah definitely slowed me down definitely planted seeds of doubt Plant but it didn't stop me so what is it in you that pushed through all of that to become a comic and then get into the world of speaking mm. and accomplished what you have well honestly it was it the cat catalyst, if you will, was the question from Brian Tracy. Mm -hmm. But I really credit it to my business failure that put me at such a low point that I really had nothing to lose. It was the timing of both. If I didn't have that question at that time, and if I didn't have the low point, like just before that, I would have never said, I got nothing to lose. And then when I went on stage that first time, I was so nervous. I was so petrified. But I forced myself to do it. In fact, I brought like 22 of my friends to force me to go up. I said, I'm going up tonight. I may never do this again, but I can't live with the regret of wondering what if. And so that's what, that was the catalyst to get me to go up on stage. And so because of that, and then I got one little laugh by accident. It was like a drug. (laughs) It was like a hit of meth. I'm assuming. (laughs) <laughs> and assuming. assuming and it was like I, I'm gonna figure this out yeah. you know and I also thought deeply about it too when I think of you know growing up as a young boy uh, idolizing football and yeah. wanting to be a football star not being cut out with the body <laughs> or the talent for it but I even thought about it. I'm like well what if I could well an NFL long career is four years and then what yeah and I thought you know the cool thing about comedy is like George Burns was still doing it like to almost 100 years old. old, So I was like, all right, it may take some time, but I got some leeway. And if I, (laughs) if I figure it out, I could do it for the rest of my life. And I just felt the joy. And I think it was when I was really young, I had the jealous, I was jealous of my brother and my cousin who were very funny naturally and not realizing it could be a learned skill that yeah. the first headline comedian that I ever spoke to said, you know, there's, you know, there's naturally funny, the class count, and then there's doing it on stage right. on demand. That's a different skill set. Yeah. People who are naturally funny have a propensity to learn it faster, but right. they still have to learn that in front of a group of 100 strangers. Yeah. So having no uh, early time limit I just said, I don't care how long it'll take. I'll figure this out. And I know. 